Many thanks for keeping it KTN Farmers TV. Welcome yet again for another uh, insightful episode on Get It Right. With us today is Albert Kamatu, who is a tech innovator on many fields. And today we will be discussing about biogas production here in Kenya. Albert, welcome to Get It Right. Tell us more about yourself. Thank you, Susan. My name is Albert Kamatu. I am an alumni of Marshall of Israel, Kenya. So I'm here to discuss more on the biogas production. Thank you. Okay, Albert, when we talk about biogas production, yeah. what does that entail? So with biogas production, it entails about uh, we as Kenyans adapting a renewable uh, resource en of energy cooking and adapting it as an alternative to what we normally use in the farm, uh, in, the, in, in, our, in, our, in our homesteads. Yeah. You can explain to us further on the processes that are that entail you know, converting these resources into usable energy. Yeah, basically we have um, the original ones that people use uh, the cow dung slurry, mm -hmm. and then now it builds up to the to the methane gas that is normally used in the homestead. Mm -hmm. So we find we have also an alternative source whereby you can use even waste uh, um, greens from the farm or the kitchen mm -hmm. and also convert it to a very viable gas for cooking. And yeah. how is that done? So with the process is very simple because it starts with you understanding uh, the basic uh, um, refuses you get from the kitchen. Instead of going to throw them in the dustbin, it can be uh, alternatively used uh, in the new system we have called Home Bio uh, from uh, Amiran, Kenya. and since it is a flexi tube version, it is well adaptable to uh, the process whereby it uh, ferments and disintegrates into biogas. And with this system, we all know um, all those materials disintegrate and they ferment. So they go through the oxidation process and come up to bring about uh, the methane gas. So you find when we embrace that, People will not have that uh, mentality. Uh, it's not so much engrossing to rely on only one input that is the cow dung slurry or the pig slurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Albert, maybe you can touch a bit on a capacity building because when you walk around our cities, you will yes. uh, you will see heaps and heaps you know, of waste material that actually I'm um, I'm happy to learn that they can be converted into energy. So how do you? think people can get this information yes. and be able now to convert these resources into something that can benefit their lives. So fundamentally, we're looking on this broad aspect of uh, familiarizing the people, in particular the urban areas. The urban areas, you have uh, people having that um, uh, constrained part of dumping things here and there. Yes. So once they understand, mm -hmm. these things can be harnessed and then they reduce pollution of such elements uh, because you find, uh, like in the Nairobi County, for example, you have people crying fall play in terms of um, waste management issues. So that one, once we develop it, it can be able to um, set up into the urban uh, zones where we have uh, the uprising flats. So on the, on the, on the side of it, eh, it, because it's not that big in size for setup, it can be applicable and well viable as an alternative source of energy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's look at the different systems of biogas that we have here in Kenya. Yes. Tell us more about that. Um, initially, you'd find uh, back in the days, about 20, 30 years ago, um, the first unit was the, the fixed dome digester. So with that, the innovation transcended. So we got, uh, we have the flexi tube. And with the flexi tube, it came an alternative to uh, the fixed bio dome uh, system. And uh, despite that also, guys have gone now far, like um, the Israeli community have developed now the float tube. So with that, we are finding in terms of uh, uh, migration of uh, events, mm -hmm. people are coming up with even better solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we hope by the year 2030, 2050, mm -hmm. Uh, the, somebody else will also come up with a, 
with, with a better version of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, maybe from the reinvention of this system, yes. which one would you recommend in terms of cost effectiveness? Yes, and maybe other superior advantages over the other. Advise us on that. Okay. Like you find in the case of the fixed dome uh, system, eh? um, you require a lot of capital because of excavating, fixing, and doing the mm -hmm. piping and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the new version of uh, the home bio, uh, it's quite flexible in terms of uh, maneuvering it and uh, setting it up. Mm -hmm. And you find the cost of it will be like uh, on a basis of maybe a, a quarter of the total amount you'd use to set up the fixed dome. So with the rural people and the SME uh, category, we'd, we'd, I'd like to give um, a recommendation mm -hmm. because it is user friendly and uh, it is holistic also in approach of uh, waste management. Mm -hmm. So when you say going green, this would be good for uh, cleaning your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking at our rural settlements, there are so many resources that are actually available that people can use and uh, improve their lives in terms of you know embracing use of energy for domestic uses and yeah. all that are there organizations that can actually come in and help some of these people that may not be able to you know to afford this kind of installation uh, since you uh, deal with the, with the with the effects of where uh, people are trying to embrace this eh? um, we are conducting i'm conducting uh, training sessions at my farm and uh, in those training sessions we are working hand in hand with interested parties to understand how the biogas works and after we are done creating that profile of uh, explaining the modalities and everything that is involved with the biogas uh, we give the client um, a mileage mm -hmm. so that they can see by adapting this, this is what you save, this is what you gain. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from all that, we understand we are about the issue of uh, uh, creating a safe environment for cooking and uh, adapting to the new technology of uh, energy, renewable resources of energy. Yeah. And what does this mean to our environment when it comes to conservation? So to conservation, you'd imagine uh, back in the, in, the, in, the, in the days, eh? People using firewood, eh? yes. they get that uh, smoke. Eh? So you find the cases of uh, tuberculosis are on the rice and people are just ignorant to the fact that that is a, a form of energy that is uh, killing you slowly. Yes. Yeah. So as we proceed by understanding the advantages in the conservation issue or aspect, eh, you find uh, those uh, leftovers and uh, all those other materials you find within the homestead, eh, they help you by creating a, a zone whereby instead of you burning them out or trying a way of disposal, they give you back energy in return. So you find uh, by people understanding all these aspects, we go down to the nitty gritties of telling people, when it gets to this, you'll be trying to avoid um, the way we have uh, the systems of, uh, uh, um, um, of keeping the environment clean, like uh, there you have these guys who are doing the dustbin collection. Yes. So you find when they come and collect your dustbin with the, in, in your urban uh, setup areas, eh, they sort things out depending on what is viable for them. Mm -hmm. And the, the one that is not viable for them is taken to a place whereby it rots and never helps somebody else. So you find that one, when people understand from that aspect, mm -hmm. it's quite mind-blowing. Yeah. And uh, on the other part also, in the conservation of energy, it's a plus. What is our potential as a nation to be able really to embrace this technology fully? And especially in those areas that they don't have access to power. So on that line you'd find, here as a Kenya, the country, uh, we are very much uh, uh, dogged by stereotypical thinking, yes. way of doing things. So as guys, when we create a, a, a forum and a platform mm -hmm. of uh, sensitizing people to understand the dynamics and how this thing is very beneficial to you, um, 
We start by first of all creating uh, those training sessions and uh, coming up with uh, with uh, with the workshops. Eh? We go from county to county, mm -hmm. get the information right. So when you get your clientele, be it uh, um, um, a senior citizen, you use a language that is adaptable to the senior citizen to understand the magnitude of uh, getting the energy from the biogas. So when it comes to the youth, you package that information um, based on the way they, rece they receive it, assimilate it, and then embrace it. Mm -hmm. Because you find those two groups uh, have a different way of understanding and doing things. Yes. So when you, you, you create um, an equilibrium in terms of understanding the need of this, pa this person uh, and that other person from which group mm -hmm. and from which age set and also you are literally uh, endowed how much. So when it comes to that, we are very ready to walk the journey and believe me, you, me between now and the year 2030, most of the Kenyan households mm -hmm. will adapt to this yes. because you find people are asking questions in terms of the monetary budget. Yes. And as I put it back again, it's economical and user friendly. When we look at the biogas which is produced you know, from the cow dung slurry and this one that is coming from the leftover, so is it of the same quality? It depends on the ratios you're mixing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you find eh, uh, with the cut down slurry, once you start with it as a base, it will give you a constant flow of uh, the gas. And uh, when you do uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the green bridges and the leaves, eh, mm -hmm. it depends on which plant you're using. So you find like a, a plant like Amaranthus, mm -hmm. it has a high biodegradable uh, index. So when you use a capacity of like one bucket, in that system, eh, the home bio system, eh, it will run for about three hours with a flame that is high non-stop. Mm -hmm. So you find in our households when you cook, there's no way you'll be cooking on a span of six hours mm -hmm. runtime. You'll, you'll be doing one hour, a break, you do something of a, of, of, of a kind, and then now you, you do another cooking session mm -hmm. based on the kind of uh, uh, dishes we are cooking. Okay. Yeah. So even when we're using the leftovers, we still need to use uh, an amount of the slurry as a base. That mm. is what you mean in production of biogas through the leftovers. The, the cow dung is still is still an element that is required. Yeah, the cow dung is the basic uh, primary uh, base. Okay. So the secondary uh, aspect of that as a, as a, as a, as an effluent from uh, the mix eh, will be the leftovers from the kitchen. So. We are saying um, you can be alternating in application. So you can say, for example, I started the base with the cow dung slurry. Yes. Then, after two weeks of using of the uh, biogas, I can do the kitchen waste. Mm -hmm. Then, on the fourth week, I can add a bit of the cow dung slurry, and then now give the accumulation of uh, uh, the kitchen waste to be at a ratio whereby mm -hmm. when I do a bucket full of it, eh? yes. uh, and I've saved on getting the cow dung slurry. Albert, hold that thought. So we still have so much in store for you, but we will be taking a short break and we will be back in a short while. <music>